<sighs> so. so, let's do this. <laughs> All right, here we go in two. Hey well guys, what's up? Welcome back to a new episode of Gunpla TV. We are on episode number 295. I think so, yes. 295. <laughs> and uh, I'm David and... And I'm Todd and I'm back after my first break from this show since since I began. Like Whoa, episode really? before episode 200. Crazy. I've never like missed a Gunpla TV since I started. Oh dear. And I'm probably the cause of that, didn't I? Okay, well, I can tell you that uh, Naruto was great fun, so, uh, yeah. Yes, indeed. But can I ask, why, why, why the change in look? What's okay. going on here? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So, last week, there was a, Dave and Scott showed off a new Gundam that was going to be built for this week, and that is the Phoenix Unicorn narrative version. But, man, with this shiny. gold plating, it's Can't just see. so shiny. You know, actually, building this kit was probably the first kit that actually gave me a, a headache. Really? <laughs> when I, I was you... building it, because I always, I have I'm like an LED light, light like yeah. directly over my build, so I can see like closely like where I'm cutting and everything. And just because of the reflection from this gold, it was just so yeah, I can bright. Imagine. Oh. It'd be even worse if you had like one of those spotlights on it, you know? Oh gosh, this thing. Yeah, it's it's really re reflectiony. So, <laughs> wait, did you use them when you built it? <laughs> I can just imagine you like wearing sunglasses whilst you're building it. Yeah, you know why not? Hey, hey, hey! Anyway, so, yeah, we'll take a look at him in a minute. Um, we'll take a look at this in a minute. But we have some. Actually, this week there was no new Gundam releases that came no. out. But actually, that makes it a good chance to talk about something else. And I'm going to kind of go out of order a little bit and I'm going to read comment. one of the one comments, comment. at least one of the comments before we get started here. And this comes from Jetfire48 and Jetfire48, he says, I was wondering if you guys could ever review super mini plot kits as they're really fun and give us mini kits for many mechas that wouldn't have otherwise. So this is actually a good chance because there's no new gunplay to talk about. Duh. So we've got some couple of mini gun mini what do they call it mini pla mini Bandai pla. mini super pla. mini pla super mini pla kits in here. This one was and I actually don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. We'll link to it below. Everything here is written in kanji. It's just like, but it's like a Power Rangers, Power Rangers like kit. super robot thing. So these mini pla kits they're actually not made by here in Japan by the Bandai hobby. These is are actually. Chinese? These are made, usually made in China and they are sold as part of, they're sold in supermarkets. So when mm. you go to the supermarket, actually, you don't see this big box as it is. Yeah, they rip as it along is. the sides here and like You will plop see it out. like these smaller boxes here. So you get, and for these ones, actually, they have numbers on them here. So you can see like which one you're getting if you were to buy it at the supermarket. Now, how we do it here at Hobby Link Japan is, whoops, there goes one of the narratives. We sell these as sets. So one box is going to give you a complete set, which will allow you to build all of, you're able to build these little individual mini robots, but then you can also, like we saw recently with the other, oh, uh, what was the name of that one that I recently built? The God Mars. So I wanted to take a, I've been wanting to take a look at these mini plot kits for a while to kind of see how they compare because these are made in china how do they compare to the god mars type uh motoroid kits that i've been building recently and how do they compare to like kotobuki type stuff because that's also built in china but this is made by bandai in chinese factories so this is a so good chance to power talk rangers this. so we've got the power rangers ones shin geta robo and the shin -geta -robo. The robot, so, so this one is a little bit different this oh. one comes this one doesn't combine into like a giant one it comes as like three separate little guys that you can build but the box is a bit bigger I chunkier think, yeah a bit chunkier than the don't other forget one. so each pack has five calories in it Ooh, okay because you get because they're they're marketed for kids right in supermarkets yes and so you get a, a piece of chewing gum in it yep just yep. so That's they can right. put it in the food aisle each box you get a piece <laughs> of gum so when i'm going to be building this kit at home i'm going to be chewing gum. chewing gum every time i open one of the boxes i get to chew a piece of gum so that's going to be cool. exciting so we also had something else that came in. Actually, this came in last week, so 
little we'll have a little bit of gunpla on this episode. So yeah. this is I've been I've been waiting for this kit to come. This is the Haropla Ball Haro. And actually, I could not wait to get my hands yeah, on this kit. at the hobby show, right? We saw it at the hobby show, and I went ahead and got this guy built. So we'll take a look at this guy today, too. But next week, since we are kind of looking at the Bandai stuff that you would expect to find in supermarkets, yeah. I think this is also finally a good chance to look at something I've been dying to look at Would more it be closely. this right here? And that would, <laughs> yes, that would be it right here. So I've been dying to, we showed these, we showed the boxes yeah. before, but I've been actually dying to get a closer look up at these things. Nice. So these are the Neko, Neko Busoku. the Neko Busoku. But Neko and they've Busoku. been at like at every single, uh, it's Buso. Uh, it's Neko Busoku. Busoku. So they've been at every hobby show, right? They have and, uh, indeed. And actually, November, there's going to be new releases new of... New cats. Of the new cats are coming. So I'm new dying to look at these. So next next, next week, week is like a lot super... Of chibi type of... <laughs> well, a lot of chibi type of kits, but stuff that I've been kind of... I've been, I've been wanting to take a look at this mini plus stuff for a while. So it's a good cool. chance. And then also next week, we're going to finally have the next narrative kit that's coming in. That is the... Sinanju Stein narrative version. Mm, I've been cool. dying to look at that one, so that'll be next week. Also, so a lot actually, a lot of stuff to talk about, and let's get right into taking a closer look at the narrative unicorn. And I brought the old narrative unicorn, the non-plated version that was molded in this kind of weirdish gold color, just to give you guys a good comparison, because we don't actually get a good chance to compare. Like the plated version to a yeah. non-plated version, so this and is a, a lot perfect of difference. <laughs> good chance, right? The price is, of course, yeah. a lot different too. But you get a really, really shiny something cool. that definitely stands out. So let's take let's a closer take a look. look. Alrighty, so here we have. Now we have it in coded version. This is the RXO Unicorn Gundam Zero Three Phoenix Destroy Mode Narrative Version Gold Coating Full Cycle Frame Prototype Mobile Suit. As we said last week, it's a hell of a long name. <laughs> that is quite the name, isn't it? But I've done this kit before, and actually you see him rotating around to the front. So this is the one that I built previously. This was the non-coded version. This one came out last month, I think, just last month. So this is basically the exact same thing, except now you get it in this beautiful, luscious, yeah. Gold amazing coating and boy look at that sparkle. Yeah, we don't have we, we couldn't because of the sparkle We couldn't do like any extra special Like a lot of like extra <laughs> studio lighting on this just because the reflection yeah, is just exactly. going to Kill your eyes like it did for mine when I was building this thing, but yes it oh man Isn't, so, Doesn't that just look beautiful? It does it looks amazing not this guy. Let's wait for the other no. <laughs> <laughs> just just looking at this guy is is literally everything the same so the same gun it is exactly the same parts it is everything on the kit is exactly the same except this one is plated so so that's you know the only difference Todd didn't even look at the uh, manual for this kit because he he remembers every single manual he ever <laughs> ever built a kit from it's like <laughs> it's like directions when I'm driving once I've driven somewhere yeah. once I don't need to look at a map because I already know how to get there so I remember posing this guy last time for the uh, video and these things kept popping off yes so do they still do it on the new one they, I guess they do they do they are a bit tighter I, I I noticed for some reason on the older one this one seems to have really been a lot looser than when I built it I remember so actually they have a little tiny piece of tape on the joint just to give it an extra bit of grip oh, right, so it yeah. stays on because without that piece of piece of tape that thing just constantly keeps falling off so what does this guy do all what? right so we've uh, done a bit of menu like maneuverability last time but uh, we, people yeah. always always complain that uh, we don't show it off enough <laughs> we did well uh, yeah that's that's one thing i wanted to point out so I, I kind of really looked at this guy a lot the last time that we did it and gosh we i mean how many times have i built the hg unicorn in like different various functions but we can let me see if he's not gonna fall over can, this one yeah there you go. So, so let's bring him closer to the camera, just so we can point out some more stuff. All right, so this guy is not undergated, as let's point that out first, so you can see it probably if I get him up closer. But the plastic underneath the gold coating is black, so it mm. doesn't really stand out so much, but, but you can see it like here on the shoulder, there's these black marks. So this is a kit that I would definitely hear we have on the arm as well. So. This is a kit that I would definitely recommend to use like a really, really, really sharp pair of side cutters. So I use, of course, I use the, the God Hand, the ultimate side cutters for this. Just because I can cut off numb marks without having to go back and sand it or without having to use a file. And I can get these cuts as closely as possible without creating 
like stress marks as well. So, but if you if you really this this was offensive to you in all sorts of ways, would would you be able to remedy it by um, using something that would really replicate that gold paint on top? You yeah you and could, it would be quite but difficult. I think that it would be quite difficult just because this coating is just so glossy. So you put, so even glossy. if you had the same paint, I'm guessing if you put more on top, it would probably create some type of yeah you're gonna shadowing get some. Again. I don't I don't know I just can't imagine you would be able to get the same type of effect mm. if you if if the numb marks if after you cut this part off if these kind of numb marks like really really completely destroy the kit for you and like you you can't like just that's it like no and you don't want to have it anymore <laughs> just complain then, to Bandai for your money back <laughs> then well I would in that case what I would recommend is buying the non-plated version and then just repainting it gold oh, just repainting idea, it yeah. on your own so uh, if 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 that's just a complete deal deal breaker for you, those those nub marks, then buy the standard version, save yourself a little bit of money, get out some gold paint or. But I think this type of coating is really hard to duplicate in paint. So he's got the same type of movement. He's as got last the time. same type of movement. You know, we have the RG version of the unicorn here as well. But actually, for I have to say, this is one of the kits where I really think the HG of the unicorn isn't so bad. The RG is kind of fun in that it can transform from the unicorn mode to destroy mode, so you have that like dual feature. But HG kit, you have to decide one or the other. So the HG kit doesn't transform at all. You have destroy mode, and it stays at destroy mode forever. Yeah. But because I think one of the reasons is because this kit is just the design of the unicorn is just so busy, and the HG kit really duplicates that really busy look that I. The HG kit by itself is really, really detailed and really nice. Yeah, I have could, to say. Can really, see his. Ooh, there we go. Some nice his eyes close there, up. Can't Actually, one thing now that I'm looking at it here on the close up, you do have a choice for the eye sticker that you can put underneath. I chose gold because hey, he's gold. Let's have some gold eyes. Yeah. But they also give you some red eyes, so you have a choice if you want to put some red eyes, the red so eye sticker stickers. under there. Yeah. So these eyes here on the mask. Whoops. Oh, oh yeah, my I finger see. looks so big. So yeah, you can you can you could you have a choice, yeah, red head, eyes or you can't really tell the scale, but that head is absolutely tiny. It is indeed. Like here's my oh. finger for comparison. Yeah, look Hello. At that. <laughs> it's good you clean them. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that would be bad. Um, but yeah, so uh, sorry about the focus. Um, there you go. But yeah, what um what poses do they put them in, in the, on the? Oh, in the manual. Or we can we can bring this guy over here. So they just kind of have them. They show them, they show it on a stand and just. Oh, so they've they got him so the type of like that. Type of he's just like flying and shooting flying his pose. gun type of gun. So they always have the leg up like this. And yeah, they always have like one knee bent and one yeah. knee kind of straight type of thing. So the pretty standard gun down pose. So I have to say this this was I just really wanted to have these two next to each other because we don't get a chance to really compare like the plated to the non plated version. And of course the plated version is a lot more expensive, but. It looks, it really does look quite better. If you're not going to go back and repaint the kit by yourself, if you just want to have something built out of the box that looks quite stunning, then hey, it might actually be worth it really just to go and spend that extra money to get that plated version. Because I think if you were to not have many Gundam kits in your apartment or your house, but you have this really shiny gold guy mm. sitting on the shelf somewhere, this is really going to get everybody's attention, I think. Compared to the non-plated one, yeah, it's just kind of I mean, of just looks looking at this picture right now, you can see that weird. difference, right? Who else have you got? We've got. All right, so we guy. do have something else to talk about this week. So maybe I should clear the space here so that we can get a clear look at this guy here. So I've been dying for this kit to come out since it was announced, and it is the Haro Haro Plan Ball Haro. That's a fun name. There we go. He's cute. You know, one thing interesting that you can, you can see it here as it rotates around, and I know a lot of people complain about this. Me too. I'm like, eh. Bandai, it's a cheap kit, so Bandai has like the hollow arms on the inside of the oh yeah the yeah. arms there. That doesn't look so great. But one interesting thing about that that I noticed after this kit was released, it's if like, you look at the box art, it's the same. <laughs> actually, in the box art, they actually draw the hollow the hollow part. So. But the yeah. actual character doesn't have that, right? Well, <laughs> I think I that's don't, different. I don't know if this was ever in like any kind of anime or something. I think this is just something they created, just for money. Just yeah, just just because yeah. they could. So that is quite interesting. I love the ball Gundam. So and the hollow, the Haro is of course a ball. So it's like a logical step. 
for what they can do for this kit. All right, but let's take a look at what you get for this kit itself. So you get your standard huddle, and of course they give you the new arms and they give you a new gun. So there's nothing really fancy about this gun. It does have a kind of pivot feature on the top of it. And they also have, there's a polycap joint on the tip of the gun. So if you have some effect type par mm. parts or like a beam saber, you could probably, I, do I have a beam saber? I don't think I have a beam saber. But you could probably put a beam saber or something in there just to give it that really cool effect. He's got some green eyes on the inside. And this is of course, this also does come with, where did my ball box go? This also does come with, whoops, it's not in that box. This comes with, there we go. So if you like that color and you were just hoping maybe just to build it as like a regular hotto, you do get the standard arms and legs for it as well. So if you were really dying, if you were really dying just to build this guy as a standard hotto, you can, put the hands in you can put the hands in there too. I don't have the polycap. He needs an extra polycap for this, but yeah, you can attach his arms. If you did that, you would you have to take off, the, uh, take off the other ones? <laughs> oh, <Or> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you could have, have these... four arms. You could, yeah, you could have four arms. So you could have these two claws on the bottom and then you could just put his regular arms <laughs> on the top. You could go crazy with this kit. That's kind of the fun of the Hado, yeah. little mini Hado kids. Just something fun that Bandai does and... I like it. They, we saw at that Tokyo Hobby Show, they had the Haro and he had like this mecha suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one is really awesome. When's that I'm coming out? By the end of the year, right? One. You know, I don't think, I think they showed it, but I don't think. Didn't, didn't have a we, date. We, it might, yeah, we don't have a date yet. If or there is a date, I will put it like. It's not available for pre-order. So. Around, around here. <laughs> if it is possible. If yeah. not, then we will talk about it on a future episode. But I'm looking forward to that Haro as well. All right, so I think there's not a whole lot really to talk about this guy other than to look at him fancily rotate around. Yeah. So I think that about does it for oh, our building time. close up. Oh, it's gosh. like two seconds. Yeah, for this guy, uh, this is this is one of those kids I just cut everything off the runners at once because you know where everything is going to go and they're, you put it together. And they're great like, kits if you want to start getting getting into building or right? you don't have enough time to do a proper one. Right, and also as it mentions on the box, Easy, Easy assembly. assembly. No glue required. This is for all no gun nippers. And no nippers. So if you really, I still actually use nippers because yes. I, I want to get like a clean, the cleanest cut that I possibly can. And you can do that with the God Hands. But you can also just rip off the parts from the runners yeah. if you want. So you have that option. Awesome. Good for beginners. Cool. I think that wraps it up. Back to the studio. Alright, so that's it for the mm. shiny narrative. My how, are, how are your eyes doing? Yeah, they hurt. <laughs> Especially under the studio light. But yes, yeah. that is just... But it's definitely better than the other one. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to spend that little bit extra. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is just... The other I one mean, looks like a type of mucky... Type of, Goldy, right. browny, yellow. <laughs> but I mean, That's but the impressive. I mean, the nub marks do kind of stand out, as I pointed out under the close-up. Mm. But I don't know, just because it's so gold, like unless you're like really looking close, you kind of don't really notice yeah, those nub I marks. Agree. Like if you're just looking at you it from there, them, yeah. you can't see it at all. I mean, and the plastic underneath is black, so it just kind of blends in. So I mean, it works even though it wasn't undergated. It doesn't look too bad, I have to say. So all now right. what? Comment Comments. We have one more comment. So we read one earlier. We have one left. So I don't really get this, but it's from Galeo Zabi. It says, huh? Is Todd Tot? Ha <laughs> ha. Excuse my bad German joke. <laughs> okay. So do you I, understand? <laughs> I do understand that because my name is Todd. So I've actually heard about this before. In German, Todd or Tot actually means like death. Oh, okay. Dead. So... <laughs> 
So is Todd dead? Because yeah, I was got, gone yeah. last episode, so I saw that. I was like, oh. That's actually pretty cool. clever. Yeah. That is pretty clever. Okay. I, I, I knew that, though. So for those of you out there that don't know, yes, in German, Todd or Todd is like death or dead. Nice. <laughs> okay, and continuing, uh, he says, it's nice that Davis has taken a liking to building. Yeah, that was an epic kit. No, Enjoyed no, that. Yeah. Um, I'll probably, I'd like to um, get the the new one that's coming out. Ooh! I, I mean, am I saying that right? What is it? The purple haired girl. Oh. Is she coming out or is she already? Yeah, coming out. Okay. I don't remember. Well, the name will be here. Maybe we can link below. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he says, I wonder if the Mechagodzilla will later adopt fingerprints. It looks semi-glossy. Not that I don't like it that way, though. Okay. So, so. I really don't think it will show fingerprints. Yeah, that's it was. It was not... It, it may have looked glossy under our cameras, right. but it wasn't, it was a matte finish. Mm. It felt like that. Um, and in fact, Scott's going to put another... Are you going to uh, do another coat? Another coat oh, and okay. stuff on it. Yeah, so. Actually, this one you, you do kind of Yeah, I think you see. would. This one is really glossy. It, it's really shining. So it's not black, do. so it, it really is probably quite hard to, to tell. Shine, where, yeah. yeah. But I mean, if you do look close enough, you will see it on this guy. But the Godzilla, maybe not. That was a really cool looking kit. Yeah. Thanks, Scott, for building that for us. Cool. All right, so we do now, have a giveaway to yes, do for this week HL as well. Giveaway. It is that time for Four. the thousand years. Thousand years. I wonder how how old is this printout? Is it like two years old now? I don't know. It's maybe a year old or something. Who so made it? I did actually. Well, <laughs> I made it. Lindsay helped me with. She changed. The she helped changed around some of the stuff and made it more presentable. So cool. So this that's what we have. HLJ history. Right? I, I wonder if we can make print it out again. I don't. I don't. Maybe Lindsay still has the original file. <laughs> but anyway, it's yeah. time for that giveaway. And this week's lucky number is comment number fifty-four by. Good luck saying that. Vitified. Defied. Vitified. What the vitched? <laughs> okay, vitified. And your comment is: I would love to see the room, and also probably some behind-the-scenes footage of what's going on. In HLJ. Well, we we've been doing a, mo a lot more of that recently. Like yeah. If, well, did you did you watch that the end of the Beaver video for? Yeah, that was. Did us. you guys the Beaver well, video for the Tokyo Hobby Show? Was there was a little Tom bit Scott of walking me around. and Scott. We were walking through HLJ. Me, like doing going friend. back <laughs> with the phone. <laughs> and he didn't um, trip. No, I was lucky enough not to. But um, what else? The room. I guess you mean this room. This room. It's. Uh, I mean, you're starting to see the uh, two angled shots and stuff. We are actually not doing that today, but uh -huh. um, that's because we uh, do not have Scott's other other phone. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, I don't know if you'd want to look in here. To be honest, it's a bit it's, of a mess. It is quite a mess. This area that you're seeing right here is quite presentable, but the but rest behind of the it camera is just kind of just like a bomb mess. went off. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, there's like, a cabinet with some stuff here as well. Yeah, we we still got some some Sid's some stuff that Sid had. Build and whatnot, so but yeah, some the good other. stuff, but not a whole lot. But I no. think you, maybe you guys would like to see more of the warehouse, and maybe that would be something else good to yeah, show. Yeah, we should do like future, a. So, oh, mind you, it's not the room. This isn't the room. Oh, I remember what I said last episode. The room is your room, where you've got all of this. Oh, oh your room of Gumpler and everything, and all your models you've built on. On the kits you built on this show. Oh gosh, my apartment? Yeah. <laughs> That's like a HLJ Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, I don't know. You, is there a room that doesn't have a gumpler in it? No. Well, what about your toilet? The toilet doesn't have a gumpler in it. But <laughs> it's just got a pair of nippers hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use to cut off the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, <God. laughs> but yeah, we digress. But yes, uh, <laughs> yes anyway. divide, you are the winner. You are the winner. And we will be contacting you eventually on HLG or HobbyLink.tv. Yeah, so mm -hmm. please stay tuned for that. All right. So if you guys out there would also like to win 2,000 yen HobbyLink Japan store credit, all you need to do is go to hobbylink.tv, find episode number 295, and, and post a comment. comment. That's all you have to do. It's That's as it. simple as that. But we also encourage you to like and subscribe and yes. hit the bell for notifications because YouTube is dying at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, when we fi we're filming this, like it's going to be a different time to you guys, but mm. yesterday for us... YouTube went down for a bit, so uh, right. It was big worldwide news. Yeah, I'm Maybe sorry if you. Maybe it was the uh, CIA or. Yeah, it was. Um, it was actually all you guys coming and storming our channel. Oh, that could be it too. Yeah, oh, there's lots of theories. There's this. Who knows? There's this hacking group that said that they did it. 
Okay. Yeah, but who knows? Anyway, YouTube's very secretive, but uh, right. please continue watching us. Right. And if anything doesn't appear on the main website, it's probably not our fault with that. Mm. Well, Hobby Link TV. Ah, Hobby Link TV. Anyway, yeah. so. All right, I think that about wraps it up for this think episode. So. Shall cool. we get going? Yeah. All right, guys, so please remember we are brought to you by HobbyLink Japan, HLJ.com. So please remember to buy your stuff from us. It and helps us. That it does. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, basically all the social media platforms that matter. Rest in peace, Google. What was the name of that thing? Oh, um... Oh, Google, I can't remember. Just, Google like, One or something. Google Plus. Plus, that was Google it. Plus, Maybe. they just... Was it Plus? Nobody used it anyway. No. <laughs> that Everyone thing is now like, gone. Yeah, but um, so next week. Next week, Mini, mini Pla and some Nekobuso. Yeah. So stay tuned. See ya.